Count Guido Franceschini Robert Browning thanks, sir, but, should it please the reverend court, I feel I can stand somehow, half sit down without help, make shift to even speak, you see, fortified by the sip of why, tis wine, veltry, and not vinegar and gall, so changed in good the times grow. Thanks, kind sir. Oh, but one sip as enough. I want my head to save my neck, there as work awaits me still. How cautious and considerate. Aye, 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 not your fault, sweet sir. Come, you take to heart an ordinary matter. Law is law. Now the men were exempt, the vulgar thought, from racking, but, since law thinks otherwise, I have been put to the rack, all less over now, and neither wrist what men style, out of joint, if any harm be, tis the shoulder blade, the left one, that seems wrong I the socket, sirs, much could not happen, I was quick to faint, being past my prime of life, and out of health. In short I thank you, yes, and mean the word. Needs must the court be slow to understand how this quite novel form of taking pain, this getting tortured merely in the flesh, amounts to almost an agreeable change in my case, me fastidious, plied too much with opposite treatment, used, forgive the joke, to the rasp tooth toying with this brain of mine, and, in and out my heart, the play o' the probe. Four years have I been operated on at a soul. Do you see its tenser tremulous part my self-respect, my care for a good name, pride in an old one, love of kindred just a mother, brothers, sisters, and the like, that looked up to my face when days were dim, and fancied they found light there no in spot, foppishly sensitive, but has paid its pang. That, and not this you now oblige me with, that was the vigil torment, if you please. The poor old noble house that drew the rags o' the Franceschini s once superb array close round her, hoped to slink unchallenged by, pluck off these. Turn the drapery inside out and teach the tittering town how scarlet wears. Show men the lucklessness, the improvidence of the easy-natured count before this count, the father I have some slight feeling for, who let the world slide nor foresaw that friends then proud to cap and kiss the patron as she would, when the purse he left held spider webs, properly push his child to wall one day. Mimicked the touchy humor, furtive glance and brow where half was furious half fatigued, oh the same son got to be of middle age, sour, Saturnini, your humble servant here. When things go cross and the young wife, he finds take to the window at a whistle as bid, and yet demurs thereon, preposterous fool. Whereat the worthies judge he wants advice, and beg to civilly ask what s evil here, perhaps remonstrate on the habit they deem he s given unduly to, of beating her? Oh, sure he beats her why says John so else, who is cousin to George, who is sib to Tecla s self who cooks the meal and combs the lady s hair? What? Tis my wrist you merely dislike it for the future when you mean me martyrdom? Let the old mother's economy alone, how the brocade strips saved o' the seamy side o' the wedding gown by raiment for a year? How she can dress and dish up lordly dish fit for a duke, lamb's head and pertinence with her proud hands, feast household so a week? No word o' the wine rejoicing God and man the less when three parts water? Then, I say, a trifle of torture to the flesh, like yours, while soul is spared such for taste of hell fire, is not. But I curtail the catalogue through policy, a rhetorician as trick, because I would reserve some choice a point so the practice, more exactly parallel, having an eye to climax, with what gift, eventual grace the court may have in store either way of plague my crown of punishments. When I am hanged or headed, Time enough to prove the tenderness of only that, mere hudding, hanging, not their counterpart, not demonstration public and precise that I, having married the mongrel of a drab, am bound to grant that mongrel brat, my wife, her mother's birthright license as is just, let her sleep undisturbed, 
I the family style, her sleep out in the embraces of a priest, nor desala their bastard as my heir. Your sole mistake, dare I submit so much to the reverent court? Has been in all this pains to make us all roll downhill, rack and wrench and rend a man to pieces, all for what? Why make him up mouth in his own defense, show cause for what he has done, the irregular deed, since that he did it? Scarce dispute can be, and clear his fame a little, beside the lack of stopping even yet, if possible, discomfort to his flesh from noose or axe for that, outcome the implements of law. May it content my lords the gracious court to listen only half so patient long as I will in that sense profusely speak, and fie, they shall not call on screws to help. I killed Pompilia Franceschini, sirs. Killed too the Comparini, husband, wife, who called themselves, by a notorious lie, her father and her mother to ruin me. There s the irregular deed, you want no more than right interpretation of the same, and truth so far am I to understand? To that then, with convenient speed, because now I consider, yes, despite my boast, there is an ailing in this omoplat may clip my speech all too abruptly close, whatever the good will in me. Now for truth. I the name of the indivisible trinity. Will my lords, in the plentitude of their light, weigh well that all this trouble has come on me through my persistent treading in the paths where I was trained to go, wearing that yoke my shoulder was predestined to receive, born to the hereditary stoop and crease? Noble. I recognized my nobler still, the church, my suzerain. No mock mistress, she. The secular owned the spiritual, mates of mine have thrown their careless hooves up at her call forsake the clover and come drag my wain. There they go cropping, I protruded nose to halter, bent my back of docile beast, and now am wheeled, one wide wound all of me for being found at the eleventh hour o' the day padding the mill track, not neck deep in grass, my one fault, I am stiffened by my work, my one reward, I help the court to smile. I am representative of a great line, one of the first of the old families in Arezzo, ancientest of Tuscan towns. When my worst foe is fain to challenge this, his worst exception runs not first in rank but second, noble in the next degree only. Not malice self maligns me more. So, my lord opposite has composed, we know, a marvel of a book, sustains the point that Francis boasts the primacy mid saints. Yet not inaptly hath his argument obtained response from you and my other lord in thesis published with the world's applause rather tis Dominic such post befits, why, at the worst. Francis stays Francis still, second in rank to Dominic it may be, still, very saintly, very like our Lord. And I at least descend from a Guido once homager to the empire, not below of which account as proof that, none of the line having a single gift beyond brave blood, or able to do aught but give, give, given blood and brain, in house and land and cash, not get and garner as the vulgar may. We become poor as Francis or our Lord. Be that as it likes you, sirs, where never chanced myself grew capable any way of remark, which was soon penury makes wit premature. This struck me, I was poor who should be rich or pay that fault to the world which trifles not when lineage lacks the flag yet lifts the pole, therefore I must make more forthwith, transfer my stranded self, born fish with gill and fin fit for the deep sea. Now left barebacked in slush and sand, a show to crawlers vile reared of the low tide and are right therein. The enviable youth with the old name, wide chest, stout arms, sound brow and pricking veins, a heart full of desire, manius natural load, a brain full of belief, the noble s lot, all this life, cramped and gasping, high and dry at a wave s retreat, the misery, good my lords which made merriment at Rome of late, it made me reason, rather muse, demand why our bear-dropping palace, in the street where such an one whose grandfather sold tripe was adding to his purchased pile a fourth tall tower, could hardly show a turret sound? 
why Beatrice Countess, whose son I am, cowered in the winter time as she spun flax, blew on the earthen basket of live ash. Instead of jaunting forth in coach and six like such another widow who any year was wed? I asked my fellows, how came this about? Why, Jack, the settler's child, perhaps the camp's, went to the wars, fought sturdily, took a town and got rewarded as was natural. She of the coach and six excuse me there. Why, Don T you know the story of her friend? A clown dressed vines on somebody else's estate, his boy recoiled from muck, like Latin mower, stuck to his pen, and got to be a priest, till one day. Don't you mind the telling tract against Mola Nose, the old cardinal wrote. He penned and dropped it in the patroness desk who, deep in thought and absent much of mind, licensed the thing, allowed it for his own. Quick came promotion. So um quick, count. Oh, he can pay for coach and six, be sure. Well, let me go, do likewise, war as the word that way the Franceschini worked at first, I ll take my turn, try soldiership. What, you? The eldest son and Aaron prop o the house, so do you see your duty? Here s your post, hard by the hearth and altar. Rome from roof. This youngster, play the gypsy out of doors, and who keeps kith and kin that fall on us? Stand fast, stick tight, conserve your gods at home. Well then, the quiet course, the contrary trade. We had a cousin amongst us once was Pope, and minor glorious manifold. Try the church, the tonsure, and, since heresy s, but half slain even by the cardinal s tract he thought he wrote. Have at Molinos. Have at a fool as head. You a priest? How were marriage possible? There must be Franceschini till time ends that as your vocation. Make your brothers priests, Paul shall be porporate, and Girolamo step red stock ancient in the presence when you choose, but save one Franceschini for the age. Be not the vine but dig and dung its root, be not a priest but gird up priesthood as loins. With one foot in a razo stride to Rome, spend yourself there and bring the purchase back. Go hence to Rome, be guided. So I was. I turned alike from the hillside zigzag thread of way to the table land a soldier takes, alike from the low-lying pasture place where churchmen graze, recline, and ruminate, ventured to mount no platform like my lords who judge the world, bare brain I dare not brag but stationed me. Might thus the expression serve, as who should fetch and carry, come and go, meddle and make out cause my lords love most the public wheel, which hangs to the law, which holds by the church, which happens to be through God himself. Humbly I help the church till here I stand, or would stand but for the omoplat, you see. Bidden qualify for Rome, I, having a field, went, sold it, laid the sum at Peter's foot which means I settled home accounts with speed, set apart just a modicum should suffice to keep the villa's head above the waves of weed inundating its oil and wine, and prop roof, stanchion wall o' the palace so it should keep breath i' the body, hold its own amid the advance of neighboring loftiness, people like building where they used to beg, till sick coward one day, shared the residue between my mother and brothers and sisters there, Black-eyed babe Donna this and Donna that, as near to starving as might decently be, left myself journey charges, change of suit, a purse to put i the pocket of the groom o the chamber of the patron, and a glove with the ring to it for the digits of the niece sure to be helpful in his household, then started for Rome, and led the life prescribed. Close to the church, though clean of it, I assumed three or four orders of no consequence, they cast out evil spirits and exercise, for example. Bind a man to nothing more, give clerical savor to his layman assault, facilitate his claim to loaf and fish should miracle leave, beyond what feeds the flock, fragments to brim the basket of a friend while, for the world's sake, I rode, danced, and gammed, quitted me like a courtier, 
measure mine with whatsoever blade hath fame and fence, ready to let the basket go its round even though my turn was come to help myself, should dives count on me at dinner time as just the understander of a joke, and not a moderate in repartee. A trichasic paratus, sirs, I said here, in the fortitude of years fifteen, so good a pedagogue is penury, here wait, do service, serving and to serve. And, in due time, I no wise doubt at all, the recognition of my service comes. Next year I am only sixteen. I can wait. I waited thirty years, may it please the court, saw meanwhile many a denizen o oh, the dung hop, skip, jump o'er my shoulder, make him wings and fly aloft, succeed, in the usual phrase. Everyone soon or late comes round by Rome, stand still here. ULLC all in turn succeed. Why, look you, so and so, the physician here, my father s lack we s son we sent to school, doctored and dosed this eminence and that, said the last pope his certain obstinate sore, soon bought land as became him, names it now, I grasp bell at his griffin guarded gate, traverse the half mile avenue, a term, a cypress, and a statue, three and three. Deliver message from my monsignor, with varaltry at lounge I the vestibule I am barred from, who bear mud upon my shoe. My father s chaplain s nephew, chamberlain, nothing less, please you. Courteous all the same, he does not see me though I wait an hour at his staircase landing twixt the brace of bus, a nose Lucilla, Marius maim to match, my father gave him for a hexa stitch made on my birthday, but he sends me down, to make amends, that relic I prize most the unburned and o' oh, the very candle, sirs, purfled with paint so prettily round and round, he carried in such state last Peter S. Day, in token I, his gentleman and squire, had held the bridle, walked his managed mule without a tit up the procession through. Nay, the official, one you know, sweet lords who drew the warrant for my transfer late to the new prisons from Tardinina, he graciously had remembrance Francesc. Ha! His sire, now how a thing shall come about. Paid me a dozen florins above the fee, for drawing deftly up a deed of sale when troubles fell so thick on him, good heart, and I was prompt and pushing. By all means. At the new prisons beat his son shall lie anything for an old friend. And their outsigned name with triple flourish underneath. These were my fellows, such their fortunes now, while I kept fast and feast innumerable, matins and vespers, functions to know in by the train of Monsignor and Eminence, as gentleman squire, and for my zeal less reward have rarely missed a place at the table foot except when some ambassador, or such like, brought his own people. Brief. One day I felt the tick of time inside me, turning point and slight sense there was now enough of this, that I was near my seventh climacteric, hard upon, if not over, the middle life, and, although fed by the east wind, fool some fine with foretaste of the land of promise, still my gorge gave symptom it might play me false. Better not press it further, be content with living and dying only a nobleman who merely had a father great and rich, who simply had one greater and richer yet, and so on back and back till first and best began I the night. I finish in the day. The mother must be getting old, I said, the sisters are well wedded away, our name can manage to pass a sister off, at need, and you for dowry, both my brothers thrive regular priests there, nor, hat like, bod twix flesh and fowl with neither privilege. My spare revenue must keep me and mine. I am tired, Erezo as air is good to breathe. Vitiano, one limes flocks of thrushes there. A lethern coat costs little and lasts long, let me bid hope goodbye, content at home. Thus, one day, I disbosomed me and bowed. Whereat began the little buzz and thrill o' oh, the gazers round me. Each face brightened up, as when at your casino. Deep in dawn, a gamester says at last, I play no more, for go gain, acquiesce in loss, 
withdraw anyhow, and the watchers of his ways, a trifle struck compunctious at the word, yet sensible of relief, breathe free once more, break up the ring, venture polite advice how, sir, so scant if heart and hope indeed, retire with neither cross nor pile from play, so incurious, so short casting, give her chance to a younger, stronger, bolder spirit belike, just when luck turns and the fine throw sweeps all. Such was the chorus, and its good will men see that the loser leave door handsomely. There s an ill look, it s sinister, spoils sport, when an old bruised and battered year by year fighter with fortune, not a penny in poke, reels down the steps of our establishment and staggers on broad daylight in the world, in shagrag beard and doleful doublet, drops and breaks his heart on the outside. People parade such as the prophet of a trip upstairs. Contrive he sidle forth, balked of the blow best dealt by way of morrow, bidding down no curse but blessings rather on our heads for some poor prize he bears at tattered breast, some palpable sort of kind of good to set over and against the grievance, give him quick. Whereon protested Paul, go hang yourselves. Leave him to me. Count Guido and brother of mine. A word in your ear. Take courage since faint heart Nebraska air one. Aha, fair lady, Don T. Men say? There s a sirs, there s a right Virgilian dip. Do you see the happiness o' the hint? At worst, if the church want no more of you, the court no more, and the camp is little, the ingrates, come, count you are counted, still you ve coat to back. Not cloth of gold and tissue, as we hoped, but cloth with sparks and spangles on its frieze from camp, court, church, enough to make a shine, entitle you to carry home a wife with the proper dowry, let the worst betide. Why, it was just a wife he meant to take. Now, Paul's advice was weighty, priests should know, and Paul apprised me, ere the week was out, that Pietro and Violante, the easy pair, the sits enough, with stomach to be more, had just the daughter and exact the sum to truck for the quality of myself, she is young, pretty and rich, Yuri noble, classic, choice. Is it to be a match? A match, said I done. He proposed all, I accepted all, and we performed all. So I said and did simply. As simply followed. Not at first but with the outbreak of misfortune, still one comment on the saying and doing what? No blush at the avowal you dared by a girl of age beseems your granddaughter, like ox or ass. Are flesh and blood aware? Are heart and soul a chattel? Softly, sirs. Will the court of its charity teach poor me anxious to learn, of any way of the world, allowed by custom and convenience, save the same which? Taught from my youth up, I trod. Take me along with you? Where was the wrong step? If what I gave in barter, style and state and all that hangs to Franceschini hood, were worthless, why, society goes to ground, its rules are idiot s rambling. Honor of birth, if that thing has no value, cannot buy something with value of another sort, if they no reward nor punishment to give either giving or the taking honor. Straight your social fabric, pinnacle to base, comes down a clatter like a house of cards. Get honor, and keep honor free from flaw, aim at still higher honor, gable o' the goose. Go bid a second blockhead like myself spend fifty years in guarding bubbles of breath, soap suds with air i' the belly, gilded brave, guarded and guided, all to break at touch o' the first young girl as hand and first old fool as purse. All my privation and endurance, all love, loyalty, and labor dared and did, fiddle dee dee. Why, do er endure both, Count Guido Franceschini had hit the mark far better, spent his life with more effect, as a dancer or a prizer, trades that pay. On the other hand, bid this buffoonery cease, admit that honor is a privilege, the question follows, privilege worth what? Why? Worth the market price, now up, now down, 
just so with this as with all other wear, therefore say the market, sell your name, style and condition to who buys them best. Does my name purchase, had I dared inquire, your niece, my lord? There would have been rebuff though courtesy, your lordship cannot else not altogether. Rank for rank may stand, but I have wealth beside, you poverty. Your scale flies up there, bid a second bid, rank two, and wealth two. Reason like yourself. But was it to you I went with goods to sell? This time twas my scale quietly kissed the ground, mere rank against mere wealth some youth beside, some beauty too, thrown into the bargain, just as the buyer likes or lets alone. I thought to deal o oh, the squire, others find fault, it seems, the thing is, those my offer most concerned, Pietro, Violanti, cried they fair or foul? What did they make o oh, the terms? Preposterous terms. Why then exceed so promptly, close with such nor take a minute to chafer? Bargain struck, they straight grew bilious, wished their money back, repented them, no doubt, why? So did I, so did your lordship, if town talk be true, of paying a full farm s worth for that piece by Pietro of Cortona probably his scholar Ciro Ferry may have retouched you caring more for color than design getting a little tired of cupids too. That s incident to all the folk who buy. I am charged, I know, with gilding fact by fraud. I falsified and fabricated wrote myself down roughly richer than I prove, rendered a wrong revenue, grand at all. Mere grace, mere coquetry such fraud, I say, a flourish round the figures of a sum for fashion as sake, that deceives nobody. The veritable backbone, understood essence of this same bargain, blank and bare, being the exchange of quality for wealth, what may such fancy flights be? Flecks of oil flirted by chapmen where plain dealing grates. I may have dripped a drop my name I sell. Not but that I too boast my wealth as they, we bring your riches. Still our ancestor was hardly the rapscallion, folks saw flogged, but ere to we know who, were rights of force. They knew and I knew where the backbone lurked I the writhings of the bargain, lords, believe. I paid down all engaged for, to a doit delivered them just that which, their life long, they hungered in the hearts of them to gain incorporation with nobility thus in word and deed, for that they gave me wealth. But when they came to try their gain, my gift, quit Rome and qualify for a razo, take the tone of the new sphere that absorbed the old, put away gossip Jack and Goody Joan and go become familiar with the great, greatness to touch and taste and handled now, why, then? They found that all was vanity, vexation, and what Solomon describes. The old abundant city fair was best, the kindly warmth of the commons, the glad clap of the equal on the shoulder, the frank grin of the underling at all so many spoons fire new at neighborly treat, best, best and best beyond compare. Down to the law itself o' the pot house settle. Better such a bench than the stiff crucifixion by my days under the piecemeal damask canopy with the corinted coat of arms atop. Poverty and privation for pride's sake, all they engage to easily brave and bear, with the fit upon them and their brains a work, proved unendurable to the sobered soats. A banished prince, now, will exude a juice and salamander like support the flame, he dines on chestnuts. Chucks the husks to help the broil o oh, the brazier, pays the due by och, goes off light-hearted, his grimace begins at the funny humors of the christening feast of friend the money lender, then he s touched by the flame and frizzles at the babe to kiss. Here was the converse trial, opposite mind, here did a petty nature split on rock of vulgar wants predestinate for such one dish at supper and weak wine to boot. The prince had grinned and borne. The citizen shrieked, summoned the neighborhood to attest the wrong, made noisy protest he was murdered, stoned and burned and drowned and hanged, then broke away, he and his wife, to tell their Rome the rest. And this you admire, you men of the world, my lords? This moves compassion, makes you doubt my faith?
Why, I appeal to Sun and Moon. Not I. Rather to Plotus, Terence, Boccaccio S. Book, my townsman, Frank Sear Franco S. Mary Tales, to all who strip a visor from a face, a body from its padding, and a soul from froth and ignorance it styles itself, if this be other than the daily hap of purblind greed that dog like still drops bone, grasps shadow, and then howls the case is hard. So much for them so far, now for myself, my profit or loss I the matter, married am I, text whereon friendly censors burst to preach. A, at Rome even, long ere I was left to regulate her life for my young bride alone at Arezzo, friendliness outbroke, sifting my future to predict its fault, purchase and sale being thus so plain a point, how of a certain soul bound up, maybe. I the barter with the body and money bags. From the bride's soul, what is it you expect? Why, loyalty and obedience, wish and will to settle and suit her fresh and plastic mind to the novel, nor a disadvantageous mood. Father and mother shall the woman leave, cleave to the husband, be it for weal or woe, there is the law. What sets this law aside in my particular case? My friends submit guide, guardian. Benefactor, fee, for, fume, the fact is you are forty-five years old, nor very comely even for that age, girls must have boys. Why, let girls say so then, nor call the boys and men, who say the same, Brutus and beast the other as they do. Come, cards on table. When you chant us next epithalamium full to overflow with praise and glory of white womanhood, the chaste and pure troll no such lies o er lip. Put in their stead a crudity or two, such short and simple statement of the case as youth chalks on our walls at spring of year. No. I shall still think nobler of the sex, believe a woman still may take a man for the short period that his soul wears flesh, and, for the soul's sake, understand the fault of armor frayed by fighting. Tush. It tempts one's tongue too much. I ll say the law as the law, with a wife, I look to find all the felliness, as when I buy, timber and twig, a tree I buy the song o' oh, the nightingale inside. Such was the pact, Pompilia from the first broke it, refused from the beginning day either in body or soul to cleave to mine, and published it forthwith to all the world. No rupture, you must join or you can break. Before we had cohabited a month she found I was a devil and no man, made common cause with those who found as much, her parents, Pietro and Violante, moved heaven and earth to the rescue of all three. In four months' time, the time o' oh, the parents' stay, a razo was a ringing, bells in a blaze, with the unimaginable story rife by the mouth of man, woman, and child to wit my misdemeanor. First the lighter side. Ludicrous face of things, how very poor the Franceschini had become at last, the meanness and the misery of each shift to save a soldo, stretch and make ends meet. Next, the more hateful aspect, how myself with cruelty beyond Caligula s had stripped and beaten, robbed and murdered them. The good old couple, I decoyed, abused, plundered and then cast out, and happily so, since in due course the abominable comes, woe well worth the poor young wife left lonely here. Repugnant in my person as my mind, I sought, was ever heard of such revenge. To lure and bind her to so cursed a couch, such co-embrace with sulphur, snake and toad, that she was fain to rush forth, call the stones o' the common street to save her, not from hate of mine merely, but must I burn my lips with the blister of the lie? The satire love of who but my own brother, the young priest, too long enforced to lent and fare bell like, now tempted by the morsel tossed him full o' the trencher where lay bread and herbs at best. Mark, this yourselves say. This, Nandis Allos, was charged to me by the universal voice at the instigation of my four months wife. And then you ask such charges so preferred, truly or falsely, 
here concerns us not, pricked you to punish now if not before? Did not the harshness double itself, the hate harden? I answer of it your way and will. Say my resentment grew apace, what then? Do you cry out on the marvel? When I find that pure smooth egg which, laid within my nest, could not but hatch a comfort to us all, issues a cockatrice for me and mine, do you stare to see me stamp on it? Swans are soft, is it not clear that she you call my wife, that any wife of any husband, caught wetting a sting like this against his breast, speckled with fragments of the fresh broke shell, married a month and making out cry thus? proves a plague prodigy to God and man. She married, what was it she married for, counted upon and meant to meet thereby. Love suggests someone, love, a little word whereof we have not heard one syllable. So, the poem Pelia, child, girl, wife, in one, wanted the beating pulse, the rolling eye, the frantic gesture, the devotion due from Thyrsus to Nera. Guido S. Love why not prove in sil roses in his shoe, plume to his cap, and trio of guitars at casement, with a bravo close beside? Good things all these are, clearly claimable when the fit price is paid the proper way. Had it been some friend s wife, now, threw her fan at my foot, with just this pretty scrap attached, shame, death, damnation fall these as they may, so I find you, for a minute. Come this eve. Why, at such sweet self-sacrifice, who knows? I might have fired up, found me at my post, ardent from head to heel, nor feared catch cough. Nay, had some other friend s. Say, daughter, tripped upstairs and tumbled flat and frank on me, bar-headed and barefooted, with loose hair and garments all at large, cry take me thus. Duke so and so, the greatest man in Rome to escape his hand and heart have I broke bounds, traversed the town and reached you. Then, indeed, the lady had not reached a man of ice. I would have rummaged, ransacked at the word those old odd corners of an empty heart for remnants of dim love the long disused, and dusty crumblings of romance. But here, we talk of just a marriage if you please the everyday conditions and no more. Where do these bind me to bestow one drop of blood shall die my wife as true love not pink? Pompelia was no pigeon, Venus pet, that shuffled from between her pressing paps to sit on my rough shoulder, but a hawk, I bought it a hawk s price and carried home to do hawk s service at the rotunda, say, where, six o the cow nestlings in a row. You pick and choose and pay the price for such. I have paid my pound, awaited my penny as worth, so, hoodwink, starve, and properly train my bird, and, should she prove a haggard, twist her neck. Did I not pay my name and style, my hope and trust, my all? Through spending these amiss I am here. Tis scarce the gravity of the court will blame me that I never piped a tune treated my falcon gentle like my finch. The obligation I incurred was just to practice mastery, prove my mastership, Pompilia's duty was submit herself, afford me pleasure, perhaps cure my bile. Am I to teach my lords what marriage means, what God ordains thereby and man fulfills who, docile to the dictate, treads the house? My lords have chosen the happier part with Paul and neither marry nor burn. Yet priestliness can find a parallel to the marriage bond in its own blessed special ordinance, whereof indeed was marriage made the type, the church may show her insubordinate, as marriage her refractory. How of the monk who finds the claustral regimen too sharp after the first month SSA? What is the mode with the deacon who supports indifferently the rod o' the bishop when he tastes it smartful for weeks? Do you straightway slacken hold of the innocents, the all unwary ones who, eager to profess, mistook their mind? Remit a fast day's rigor to the monk who fancied Francis Manament roast quails, concede the deacon sweet society, he never thought the Levite rule renounced, or rather prescribed short chain and sharp scourge corrective of such peccant humors? 
this I take to be the church's mode, and mine, if I was over harsh, the worse I the wife who did not win from harshness as she ought, wanted the patience and persuasion, lore of love, should cure me and console herself. Put case that I mishandle, flurry, and fright my hoke through clumsiness and sportsmanship, to which out five pence where plucking one would serve what, shall she bite and claw to mend the case? And, if you find I pluck five more for that, shall you weep now he roughs the turtle there? Such was the starting. Now of the further step. In lieu of taking penance in good part, the monk, with hue and cry, summon some up to make a bonfire of the convent, say, and the deacon as pretty piece of virtue save the ears o' the court. I try to save my head instructed by the ingenuous postulant, taxes the bishop with adultery. Mud needs must pair off with mud, and filth with filth. Such being my next experience, who knows not the couple, father and mother of my wife, returned to Rome, published before my lords, put into print, may circulate far and wide that they had cheated me who cheated them? Pompilia, I supposed their daughter, drew breath first mid Rome's worst rankness, through the deed of a drab and a rogue, was by blow bastard babe of a nameless strumpet, passed off, palmed on me as the daughter with the dowry. Daughter. Dirt o' the kennel. Dowry? Dust o' the street. Not more, not less, not else but o' I assuredly a Franceschini and my very wife. Now take this charge as you will, for false or true, this charge, preferred before your very selves who judge me now, I pray you, a judge again, classing it with the cheats or with the lies, by which category I suffer most. But of their reckoning, theirs who dealt with me in either fashion, I reserve my word, justify that in its place. I am now to say, whichever point o' oh, the charge might poison most, Pompilia's duty was no doubtful one. You put the protestation in her mouth henceforward and forevermore, of what ye fiends, who drop disguise and glare revealed in your own shape, no longer father mine nor mother mine. Too nakedly you hate me whom you look as if you loved once, me whom, whether true or false, your tale now damns, divulged thus to my public infamy, private perdition, absolute overthrow. For, hate my husband to your heart's content. I, spoil and prey of you from first to last, I who have done you the blind service, lord the lion to your pitfall, I, thus left to answer for my ignorant bleeding there, I should have been remembered and withdrawn from the first o' oh, the natural fury, not flung loose a proverb and a by your erd men will mouth at the crossway, in the corner, up and down Rome and Arezzo, there, full in my face, if my lord, Missing them and finding me, content himself with casting his reproach to drop by the street where such impostors die. Ah, but that husband, what the wonder were. If, far from casting thus away the rags smeared with the plague, his hand had chanced upon, sewn to his pillow by Lacusta as while, far from abolishing, root, stem, and branch. The misgrowth of infectious mistletoe foisted into his stock for honest graft, if he, repudiate not, renounce the wise, but, guarding, guiding me, maintain my cause by making it his own. What other way? To keep my name for me, he call it his, claim it of who would take it by their lie, to save my wealth for me or babe of mine their lie was framed to beggar at the birth he bid them loose grasp, give our gold again. Refused to become partner with the pair even in a game which, played adroitly, gives its winner life as great wonderful new chance, of marrying, to wit, a second time. Ah, did he do thus, what a friend were he. Anger he might show, who can stamp out flame yet spread no black o' the brand. Yet, rough all be it in the act, as whose bare feet fill embers scorch. What grace were his, what gratitude were mine. Such protestation should have been my wife's. Looking for this, do I exact too much? Why, here as the, word for word so much, no more, a vowel she made, 
her pure spontaneous speech to my brother the abate at first blush, or the good impulse had begun to fade so did she make confession for the pair, so pour forth praises in her own behalf. A. The false letter, interposed my lord's the simulated writing, t'was a trick, you traced the signs, she merely marked the same, the product was not hers but yours. Alec, I want no more impulsion to tell truth from the other trick, the torture inside there. I confess all let it be understood and deny nothing. If I baffle you so, can so fence, in the plenitude of right, that my poor lath and dagger puts aside each pass o' the bilboa, beats you all the same, what matters an efficiency of blade? Mine and not hers the letter, conceded, lords. Impute to me that practice. Take as proof I taught my wife her duty, made her see what it behoved her see and say and do, feel in her heart and with her tongue declare, and, whether sluggish or recalcitrant, forced her to take the right step, I myself marching in mere marital rectitude. And who finds fault here, say the tale be true. Would not my lords commend the priest whose zeal seized on the sick, morose, or moribund? by the palsy smitten finger, made it cross his brow correctly at the critical time? Or answered for the inarticulate babe at baptism, in its stead declared the faith, and saved what else would perish unprofessed? True, the incapable hand may rally yet, renounce the sign with renovated strength, the babe may grow up man and melinist, and so Pompilia, set in the good path and left to go alone there soon might see that too frank forward, all too simple straight her step was, and declined to tread the rough, when here lay, tempting foot, the meadow side, and there the coppice called with singing birds. Soon she discovered she was young and fair, that many in a razo knew as much, yes, this next cup of bitterness, my lords, had to begin go filling, drop by drop, its measure up of full disgust for me. Filtered into by every noisome drain society as sink toward which all moisture runs. Would not you prophesy she on whose brow is stamped the note of the imputation that we know, rightly or wrongly mothered with the horror, such an one, to disprove the frightful charge, what will she but exaggerate chastity, or in excess of whiffhood, as it were, renounce even levity's permitted youth, though not youth struck to age by a thunderbolt? Cry will find the sheepfold, whereas the sheep dares bleat, knowing the shepherd listens for a growl. So you expect. How did the devil decree? Why, my lords, just the contrary of course. It was in the house from the window, at the church from the hassock, where the theatre lent its lodge, or staging for the public show left space, that still Pompilia needs must find herself launching her looks forth letting looks reply as arrows to a challenge. On all sides ever new contribution to her lap, till one day, what is it knocks at my clenched teeth but the cup full, curse collected all for me? And I must needs drink, drink this gallant as praise, that minion as prayer, the other fop as reproach, and come at the dregs to Cape and Saki. Sirs, I, trend deep in a marsh of misery, struggling to extricate my name and fame and fortune from the marsh would drown them all, my face the sole unstrangled part of me, I must have this new gadfly in that face, must free me from the attacking lover too. Men say I battled and gracefully enough was harsh, uncouth and ludicrous beyond the proper part o' oh, the husband, have it so. Your lordships are considerate at least you order me to speak in my defense plainly? Expect no quavering tuneful trills as when you bid a singer solace you, nor look that I shall give it, for a grace, stands P. De Nuno, you remember well in the one case, tis a plain song too severe, this story of my wrongs, and that I ache and need a chair, in the other. Ask you me why, when I felt this trouble flap my face, already pricked with every shame could perch, when, with her parents, my wife plagued me too. Why I enforced not exhortation mild to leave her as tricks and let my brows alone, with mulct of comfits, promise of perfume? Far from that. No, you took the opposite course, 
breathe threatenings, rage and slaughter. What you will. And the end has come, the doom is verily here, unhindered by the threatening. See fate's flare full on each face of the dead guilty three. Look at them well, and now, lords, look at this. Tell me, if on that day when I found first that Cape and Saki thought the nearest way to his church was some half mile round by my door, and that he so admired, shall I suppose, the manner of the swallows come and go between the props o' the window overhead, that window happening to be my wife's, as to stand gazing by the hour on high, of May Eve's, while she sat and let him smile, if I, instead of threatening, talking big, showing hair powder, a prodigious pinch, for poison in a bottle, making believe at desperate doings with a bobble sword, and other bugaboo and baby work, hat, with the vulgarest household implement, calmly and quietly cut off, clean throw bone, but one joint of one finger of my wife, saying for listening to the serenade, here as your ring finger short or a full third, be certain I will slice away next joint, next time that anybody underneath seems somehow to be sauntering as he hoped a flower would eddy out of your hand to his while you please fidget with the branch above o' oh, the rose tree in the terrace. Had I done so, why, there had followed a quick sharp scream, some pain, much calling for plaster, damage to the dress, a somewhat sulky countenance next day, perhaps reproaches, but reflections too. I don't hear much of harm that Malchus did after the incident of the ear, my lords. St. Peter took the efficacious way. Malchus was sore but silenced for his life, he did not hang himself i the potter's field like Judas, who is trusted with the bag and treated to sops after he proved a thief. So, by this time, my true and obedient wife might have been telling beads with a gloved hand. Awkward a little at pricking hearts and darts on sampler possibly, but well otherwise, not where Rome shudders now to see her lie. I give that for the course a wise man takes. I took the other however, tried the fool s, the lighter remedy, brandished rapier dread with cork ball at the tip, box Malchus ear instead of severing the cartilage, called her a terrible nickname, and the like and there an end, and what was the end of that? What was the good effect o' oh, the gentle course? Why, one night I went drowsily to bed, dropped asleep suddenly, not suddenly woke, but did wake with rough rousing and loud cry, to find noon in my face, a crowd in my room, fumes in my brain, fire in my throat, my wife gone God knows whither, rifled vesture chest, and ransacked money coffer. What does it mean? The servants had been drugged too, stared and yawned. It must be that our lady has eloped. Whither and with whom? With whom but the canoness self? One recognizes Cape and Saki there. By this time the admiring neighborhood joined cowers round me while I rubbed my eyes, tis months since their intelligence began, a comedy the town was privy to, he wrote and she wrote, she spoke, he replied, and going in and out your house last night was easy work for one. To be plain with you? Accustomed to do both, at dusk and dawn when you were absent, at the villa, you know, where husband re required the master mind. Did not you know? Why, we all knew, you see. And presently, bit by bit, the full and true particulars of the tale were volunteered with all the breathless zeal of friendship thus matters were managed, at the seventh hour of night. Later, at daybreak. Cape and Saki came? While you and all your household slept like death, drugged as your supper was with drowsy stuff? And your own cousin Gulakini too either or both entered your dwelling place, plundered it at their pleasure, made prize of all, including your wife. Oh, your wife led the way, out of doors, on to the gate. But gates are shut, in a decent town, to darkness and such deeds, they climbed the wall your lady must be life at the gap, the broken bit. Torioni, true. To escape the questioning guard at the proper gate, Clemente, where at the inn, hard by, the horse, 
Just outside, a clash in readiness took the two principals, all alone at last, to Gate San Spirito, which overlooks the road, leads to Perugia, Roman liberty. Bit by bit thus made up mosaic wise, flat lay my fortune, tessellated floor, imperishable tracery devils should foot and frolic it on, around my broken gods, over my desecrated hearth. So much for the terrible effect of threatening, sirs. Well, this way I was shaken wide awake, doctored and drenched, somewhat unpoisoned so. Then, set on horseback and bid seek the lost, I started alone, head of me, heart of me fire, and each limb as languid. Ah, sweet lords, bethink you. Poison torture, try persuade the next refractory millennist with that. Floundered through day and night, another day and yet another night, and so at last, as Lucifer kept falling to find hell, tumbled into the courtyard of an inn at the end, and fell on whom I thought to find, even Capenseki, what part once was priest, cast to the winds now with the cassock rags, in cape and sword a cavalier confessed, there stood he chiding dilatory grooms chafing that only horse flesh and no team of eagles would supply the last relay, whirl him along the league, the one posed more between the couple and Roman liberty. Twas dawn, the couple were rested in a sort, and though the lady, tired, the tenderer sex, still lingered in her chamber, to adjust the limp hair, look for any blushing ray, she would descend in a twinkling, have you out the horses therefore? So did I find my wife. Is the case complete? Do your eyes here see with mine? Even the parties dared deny no one point out of all these points. What follows next? Why, that then was the time, you interpose, or then or never, while the fact was fresh, to take the natural vengeance, there and thus then you, somebody had stuck a sword beside you while he pushed you on your horse, t'was requisite to slay the couple, count. Just so my friends say kill. They cry in a breath, who presently, when matters grow to a head and I do kill the offending ones indeed, when crime of theirs, only surmised before, is patent, proved indisputably now, when remedy for wrong, untried at the time, which law professes shall not fail a friend, is thrice tried now, found threefold worse than null, when what my turn to transient shade, who knows? solidifies into a blot which breaks hell as black often pale flakes for fear of mine, then, when I claim and take revenge so rash? They cry so little reverence for the law. Listen, my masters, and distinguish here. At first, I called in law to act and help, seeing I do so, why, tis clear, they cry, you shrank from gallant readiness and risk, we're coward the thing as inexplicable else. Sweet my lords, let the thing be. I fall flat, play the reed, not the g, to breath of man. Only, inform my ignorance. Say I stand convicted of the having been afraid, proved a poltroon, no lion but a lamb, does that deprive me of my right of lamb and give my fleece and flesh to the first wolf? Are eunuchs, women, children, Shieldless quite against attack their own timidity tempts. Cowardice were misfortune and no crime. Take it that way, since I am fallen so low I scarce dare brush the fly that blows my face, and thank the man who simply spits not there, unless the court be generous, comprehend how one brought up at the very feet of law as I, awaits the grave Grimali less not or he clench fist at outrage, much less, stab. How, ready enough to rise at the right time, I still could recognize no time mature and sanctioned by a move of the judgment seat, so, mute in misery, I'd my masters here motionless till the authoritative word pronounced amorousment. There s the riddle solved, this is just why I slew nor her nor him, but called in law, law s delegate in the place, and bade arrest the guilty couple, sirs. We had some trouble to do so you have heard they braved me, he with arrogance and scorn, she, with a volubility of curse, 
a conversancy in the skill of tooth and claw to make suspicion seem absurd, nay, an alacrity to put to proof at my own throat my own sword, teach me so to try conclusions better the next time, which did the proper service with the mob. They never tried to put on mask at all, two avowed lovers forcibly torn apart, upbraid the tyrant as in a playhouse scene, a, eh? and with proper clapping and applause from the audience that enjoys the bold and free. I kept still, said to myself, their s law. Anne and we searched the chamber where they passed the night, found what confirmed the worst was feared before, however needless confirmation now the witch's circle intact. Charms undisturbed that raise the spirit and succubus, letters, to wit, love laden, each the bag o' the bee that bore honey from lily and rose to Cupid's hive, now, poetry in some rank blossom burst, now, prose, come here, go there, wait such a while, he us at the villa, now he us back again, we are saved, we are lost, we are lovers all the same. All in order, all complete even to a clue to the drowsiness that hath so opportune no mystery, when I read of all things, find what wine Sir Jealousy decides to drink red wine? Because a sleeping potion, does drop into white, discolors wine and shows. Oh, but we did not write a single word. Somebody forged the letters in our name. Both in a breath protested presently. Aha, uh -huh, so Caddy again. Dame. Quoth the Duke, what me aneth this epistle, counsel me, I pick from out thy placket and peruse, wherein my page avereth thou art white and warm and wonderful twixt pap and pap? Sir, laughed the lady tis a counterfeit. Thy page did never stroke but Diana's breast, the pretty hound I nurture for thy sake, till I were losel, by my fay, no more. And no more say I too, and spare the court. Ah, the court. Yes, I come to the court's self. Such the case, so complete in fact and proof I laid at the feet of law. There sat my lords, here sit they now, so may they ever sit in easier attitude than suits my haunch. In the same chamber did I bear my source of the soul and not the body, shun no shame, shrink from no probing of the elsewhere's part, since confident in nature, which is God that she who, for wise ends, concocts a plague, curbs, at the right time, the plague's virulence to, Lori Novitz even Lazarus, cures me. Cassar thou seekest? To Cassar thou shalt go. Cassar s at Rome? To Rome accordingly. The case was soon decided, both weights, cast I the balance, vibrate, neither kicks the beam, here away, there away this now and now that. To everyone oh my grievances law gave redress, could purblind die but see the point, the wife stood a convicted runagate from house and husband, driven to such a course by what she somehow took for cruelty, oppression and imperilment of life not that such things were, but that so they seemed, therefore, the end conceded lawful, since to save life there as no risk should stay our leap, it follows that all means to the lawful end are lawful likewise, poison, theft, and flight, as for the priest s part, did he meddle or make, enough that he too thought life jeopardized. Conceit him then the color charity casts on a doubtful course, if blackish white or whitish black, will charity hesitate? What did he else but act the precept out, leave, like a provident shepherd, his safe flock to follow the single lemon stray away? Best hope so and think so, that the ticklish time I the carriage, the tempting privacy, the last somewhat ambiguous accident at the inn, all may bear explanation, may? Then, must? The letters, do they so incriminate? But what if the whole prove a parango the pen? Flight of the fancy, none of theirs at all, breed of the vapors of my brain bell like, or at worst mere exercise of scholar as wit in the courtly cape and sacchi, verse, convict? Did not Cudulus write less seemly once? Yet doctors and unblemished he abides. Wherefore so ready to infer the worst? Still, 
I did righteously in bringing doubts for the law to solve, take the solution now. Seeing that the said associates, wife and priest, bear themselves not without some touch of blame else why the pother, scandal, an outcry which trouble our peace and require chastisement. We, for complicity in Pompilia as flight and deviation, and carnal intercourse with the same, do set aside and relegate the canon Cape and Secchi for three years at Civita in the neighborhood of Rome, and we consign Pompilia to the care of a certain sisterhood of penitence in the city as self, expert to deal with such. Word for word, there as your judgment. Read it, lords, reutter your deliberate penalty for the crime yourselves establish. Your award who chop a man's right hand off at the wrist for tracing with forefinger words and wine o' the table of a drinking booth that bear interpretation as they mock the church. Who brand a woman black between the breasts for sinning by connection with a Jew, while for the Jewess self pudency be dumb. You mete out punishment such and such yet so punish the adultery of wife and priest. Take note of that, before the Milenists do, and read me write the riddle, since right must be. While I stood wrapped away with wonderment, voices broke in upon my mood and muse. Do you sleep? Began the friends at either ear, the case is settled, you willed it should be so none of our counsel, always recollect. With law as a ward, booge, back into your place. Your betters shall arrange the rest for you. We ll enter a new action, claim the vores, your marriage was a cheat themselves allow, you were die the person, might have married thus your sister or your daughter unaware. We ll gain you, that way, liberty at least, sure of so much by law s own showing. Up and off with you and your unluckiness leave us to bury the blunder, sweep things smooth. I was in humble frame of mind, be sure. I bowed, beduk me to my place again. Station by station I retraced the road, touched at this hostel, passed this post house by, where, fresh remembered yet, the fugitives had risen to the heroic stature, still that was the bench they sat on, there as the board they took the meal at, you under garden ground they leaned across the gate of, Ever a word o' the Helen and the Paris, with Hector's. Yuri he, the much commiserated husband? Step by step, across the pelting, did I reach Arezzo, underwent the archway as grin, traverse the length of sarcasm in the street, found myself in my horrible house once more, and after a colloquy. No word assists. With the mother and the brothers, stiffened me straight out from head to foot as dead man does, and, thus prepared for life as he for hell, marched to the public square and met the world. Apologize for the pincers, palliate screws. Ply me with such toy trifles, I entreat. Trust who has tried both sulfur and sops and wine. I play the man as I best might, bade friends put on essentials by and face the fact. What need to hang myself as you advise? The paramour is banished, the ocean s width, or the suburb s length, to ultimithal, say, or proxima civitis, what s the odds of name and place? He s banished, and the fact s the thing. Why should law banish innocence an inch? Here s guilt then, what else do I care to know? The adulteress lies imprisoned whether in a well with bricks above and a snake for company, or tied by a garter to a bedpost, much I mind what as little, least as enough and to spare. The little Philip on the coward as cheek serves as though crab tree cudgel broke his pate. Law has pronounced there as punishment, less or more, and I take note o' the fact and use it thus for the first flaw in the original bond, I claim release. My contract was to wed the daughter of Pietro and Violanti. Both protest they never had a child at all. Then I have never made a contract, good. Cancel me quick the thing pretended one. I shall be free. What matter if hurried over the harbor boom by a great favoring tide, or the last of a spent ripple that lifts and leaves? The abate is about it. Laugh who wins.
you shall not laugh me out of faith in law. I'll listen, through all your noise, to Rome. Rome spoke. In three months letters thence admonished me your plan for the divorce is all mistake. It would hold, now, had you, taking thought to wed Rachel of the blue eye and golden hair, found swarth skinned the a cumber couch next day, but Rachel, blue eyed golden hair derite, proving to be only Laban as child, not Lot as, remains yours all the same for evermore. No it to the purpose is your plea, you are the person and the quality no wise in the individual, that is the case in point. You go to the ground, are met by a cross suit for separation, of the Rachel here, from bed and board, she is the injured one, you did the wrong and have to answer it. As for the circumstance of imprisonment and color it lends to this your new attack, never fear, that point is considered too. The durance is already at an end. The convent quiet preyed upon her health, she is transferred now to her parents' house no parents, when that cheats and plunders you, but parentage again confessed in full, when such confession pricks and plagues you more as now for, this her house is not the house in by Vittoria where a neighbor's watch might incommode the freedom of your wife, but a certain villa smothered up in vines at the town's edge by the gate by the Pauline Way, out of eye reach out of earshot, little and lone, whither a friend, at Chivita, we hope, a good half dozen hours ride off, might, some eve, bedake himself, and whence ride back, some morn, nobody the wiser, but be that as it may, do not afflict your brains with trifles now. You have still three suits to manage, all in each ruinous truly should the event play false. It is indeed the likelier so to do that brother Paul, your single prop and stay, after vain attempt to bring the Pope to set aside procedures, set himself and summarily use prerogative, after does the infallible finger s tack to disentwine your tangle of affairs, Paul, finding it moreover past his strength to stem the eruption, bear Rome s ridicule of. Since friends must speak. To be round with you. Of the old outwitted husband, wronged and wroth, pitted against a brace of juveniles a brisk priest who is versed in Ovid as art more than his summa, and a gamsome wife able to act corina without book, beside the waggish parents who played dupes to dupe the duper and truly diverse scenes of the Arezzo Palace, tickle rib and tease I till the tears come, so we laugh. Nor wants the shock at me in its comic force, and then the letters and poetry merum sal. Paul, finally, in such a state of things, after a brief temptation to go a jump and join the fishes in the Tiber, drown sorrow another in a wiser way, house and goods, he has sold all off, is gone, leaves Rome, whether for France or Spain, who knows? Or Britain almost divided from our orb. You have lost him anyhow. Now, I see my lords shift in their seat would I could do the same. They probably please expect my bile was moved to purpose, nor much blame me, now, they judge, the fiery titillation urged my flesh break through the bonds. By your pardon, no, sweet sirs. I got such missives in the public place. When I sought home, with such news, mounted stair and sat at last in a sombre gallery, twas autumn, the old mother in bed betimes, Having to bear the cold, the finer frame of her daughter-in-law had found intolerable the brother, walking misery away o' the mountainside with dog and gun bell-like, as I souped, ate the coarse bread, drank the wine weak once, now acrid with the toad as head squeeze, my wife as bestowment, I broke silence thus, let me, a man, manfully meet the fact, confront the worst o' the truth, and, and have peace. I am irremediably beaten here, the gross illiterate vulgar couple, bah! Why, they have measured forces, mastered mine, made me their spoil and prey from first to last. They have got my name, tis nailed now fast to theirs, the child or changeling is anyway my wife. Point by point as they plan they execute, they gain all, and I'll lose all even to the lord that led to loss, 
they have the wealth again they hazarded to wall to hook me with, have caught the fish and find the bait and tire, they even have their child or changeling back to trade with, turn to account a second time. The brother, presumably might tell a tale or give a warning, he, too, flies the field, and with him vanish help and hope of help. They have caught me in the cavern where I fell, covered my loudest cry for human aid with this enormous paving stone of shame. Well, are we demigods or merely clay? Is success still attendant on desert? Is this, we live on, heaven and the final state, or earth which means probation to the end? Why claim escape from man as predestined lot of being beaten and baffled? God as decree, in which I, bowing bruised head, acquiesce. One of us from Cheskini fell long since I the holy land, betrayed, tradition runs, to pay nims by the feigning of a girl he rushed to free from a visher, and found lay safe enough with friends an ambuscade who flayed him while she clapped her hands and laughed, let me end, falling by a like device. It will not be so hard. I am the last o' my line which will not suffer any more. I have attained to my full fifty years, about the average of us all, tis said, though it seems longer to the unlucky man lived through my share of life. Let all end here, me and the house and grief and shame at once. Friends my informants, I can bear your blow. And I believe twas a no unmeet match for the stoic s mood, with something like a smile, that, when morose December roused me next. I took into my hand, broke seal to read the new epistle from Rome. All to no use. What ere the turn next injury take, smiled I, here as one has chosen his part and knows his cue. I am done with, dead now. Strike away, good friends. Are the three suits decided in a trice? Against me, there is no question. How does it go? Is the parentage of my wife demonstrated infamous to her wish? Parades she now loosed of the cincture that so worked the loin. Is the last penny extracted from my purse to mulk me for demanding the first pound was promised in return for value paid? Has the priest, with nobody to court beside, courted the muse in exile, hitched my hap into a rattling ballad rhyme which, bald at tavern doors, wakes rapture everywhere? and helps cheap wine down throat this Christmas time, beating the bagpipes. Any or all of these. As well, good friends, you cursed my palace here to its old cold stone face, stuck your cap for crest over the shield that is extant in the square, or sped on the statuesque cheek, the impatient world sees cumber tomb top in our family church, let him creep under cover as I shall do, half below ground already indeed. Goodbye. My brothers are priests, and childless so. That s well end, thank God most for this, no child leave I none after me to bear till his heart break the being of Franceschini and my son. Nay, said the letter, but you have just that. A babe, your veritable son and heir lawful, tis only eight months since your wife left you, so, son and heir, your babe was born last Wednesday in the villa. You see the cause for quitting convent without beat of drum, stealing a hurried march to this retreat that is not so savage as the sisterhood to slips and stumbles, Pietro's heart is soft, Violante leans to pity's side, the pair ushered you into life a bouncing boy, and he has already hidden away and safe from any claim on him you mean to make they need him for themselves, don't you fear, they know the use of the bentling. The nerve thus laid bare to nip it, new and nice, with fingernail. Then I rose up like fire, and fire like rard. What, all is only beginning not ending now? The worm which wormed its way from skin through flesh to the bone and there lay biting, did its best, what, it goes on to scrape at the bone as self, will wind to inmost marrow and madden me? There s to be yet my representative. Another of the name shall keep displayed the flag with the orgery on it, brandished still the broken sword has served to stir Jake's. Who will he be, how will you call the man? A Franceschini, when who cut my purse, 
filched my name, hemmed me round, hustled me hard as rogues at a fair some fool they strip by the midst, when these count gains, von pillage presently, but a cape and secchi, oh, be very sure. When what demands its tribute of applause is the cunning and impudence o' oh, the pair of cheats, the lies and lust o' oh, the mother, and the brave bold carriage of the priest, worthily crowned by a witness to his feet by the following age, and how this threefold cord could hook and fetch and land Leviathan that king of pride. Or say, by some mad miracle of chance, is he indeed my flesh and blood, this babe? Was it because fate forged a link at last betwixt my wife and me, and both alike found we had henceforth some one thing to love? Was it when she could damn my soul indeed she unlatched door, let all the devils o' oh, the dark dance in on me to cover her escape? Why then, the surplusage of disgrace, the spilth over and above the measure of infamy, failing to take effect on my coarse flesh seasoned with scorn now, saturate with shame? is saved to instill on and corrode the brow, the baby softness of my first-born child the child I had died to see though in a dream, the child I was bid strike out for, beat the wave and baffle the tide of troubles where I swim, so I might touch shore, lay down life at last at the feet so dim and distant and divine of the apparition, as t'were Mary s babe had held, through night and storm, the torch aloft. Born now in very deed to bear this brand on forehead and curse me who could not save. Rather be the town talk true, square s jest, street s jeer true, my own inmost heart s confession true, and he as the priest s bastard and none of mine. A, there was cause for flight, swift flight and sure. The husband gets unruly, breaks all bounds when he encounters some familiar face, fashion of feature brow and eyes and lips where he least looked to find them, time to fly. This bastard then, a nest for him is made, as the manner is of vermin, in my flesh shall I let the filthy pest buzz, flap, and sting, busy at my vitals and, nor hand no foot lift, but let be, lie still and rot resigned. No, I appeal to God, what says himself, how lessens nature when I look to learn? Why, that I am alive, am still a man with brain and heart and tongue and right hand to nay, even with friends, in such a cause as this, to write me if I fail to take my right. No more of law. A voice beyond the law enters my heart, quiesced pro domino. Myself, in my own Vitiano, told the tale to my own serving people summoned there, told the first half of it. Scarce her to end by judges who got done with judgment quick and clamor to go execute her host, who cried not one of us that dig your soil and dress your vineyard, prune your olive trees, but would have brained the man debauched our wife, and staked the wife whose lust allured the man, and punched the duke, had it been possible, who ruled the land, yet barred us such revenge. I fixed on the first whose eyes caught mine, some four. Resolute youngsters with the heart still fresh, filled my purse with the residue o' the coin on cut up by my wife, whom haste made blind, donned the first rough and rural garb I found, took whatsoever weapon came to hand, and out we flung and on we ran or reeled bombward, I have no memory of our way, only that, when at intervals the cloud of horror about me opened to let in life, I listened to some song in the ear, some snatch of a legend, relic of religion. Stray fragment of record very strong and old of the first conscience, the interior right, the goddess gift to mankind, impulse to quench the antagonistic spark of hell and tread Satan and all his malice into dust, declare to the world the one law, right is right. Then the cloud re-encompassed me, and so I found myself, as on the wings of winds, arrived, I was at Rome on Christmas Eve. Festive bells everywhere the feast o' oh, the babe, joy upon earth, peace and good will to man. I am baptized. I started and let drop the dagger. Where is it, his promised peace? Nine days o' oh, the birth feast did I pause and pray to enter into no temptation more. I bore the hateful house, my brother s once, deserted, 
Let the ghost of social joy mock and make mouths at me from empty room and idle door that missed the master's step, bore the frank wonder of incredulous eyes, as my own people watched without a word, waited, from where they huddled round the hearth black like all else, that nod so slow to come I stopped my ears even to the inner call of the dread duty, heard only the song peace upon earth. Saw nothing but the face of the holy infant, and the halo they're able to cover yet another face behind it, Satan's which I else should see. But, day by day, joy waned and withered off, the babe's face, premature with peak and pine, sank into wrinkled ruinous old age, suffering and death, then mist-like disappeared, and showed only the cross at end of all, left nothing more to interpose twixt me and the dread duty. For the angel's song, peace upon earth, louder and louder pealed, O Lord, how long, how long be unavenged? On the ninth day, this grew too much for man. I started up some end must be. At once, silence, then, scratching like a death watch tick, slowly within my brain was syllabled, one more concession, one decisive way and but one, to determine thee the truth, this way. In fine, I whisper in thy ear, now doubt, and decide, thereupon it. That is a way, thou whisperest in my ear. I doubt, I will decide, then it, said I then beckoned my companions, time is come. And so, all yet uncertain save the will to do right, and the daring ought save leave right undone, I did find myself at last I the dark before the villa with my friends, and made the experiment. The final test, ultimate chance that ever was to be for the wretchedness inside. I knock pronounced the name, the predetermined touch for truth, what welcome for the wanderer. Open straight to the friend, physician, friar upon his rounds, traveler belated, beggar lame and blind? No, but to Cape and Saki. And the door opened. And then, why, even then, I think. I the minute that confirmed my worst of fears, surely, I pray God that I think aright. Had but Pompilia's self, the tender thing who once was good and pure, was once malamin lay in my bosom, had a well-known shape fronted me in the doorway, stood there faint with the recent pang, perhaps, of giving birth to what might, though by miracle, seem my child, nay more, I will say, had even the aged fool Pietro, the dotard, in whom folly and age wrought, more than enmity or malevolence, to practice and conspire against my peace, had either of these but opened, I had paused. But it was she the hag, she that brought hell for a dowry with her to her husband's house, she the mock mother, she that made the match and married me to perdition, spring and source o' oh, the fire inside me that boiled up from heart to brain, and hailed the fury gave it birth. Violante Comparini, she it was, with the old grin amid the wrinkles yet, opened, as if in turning from the cross, with trust to keep the sight and save my soul, I had stumbled, first thing, on the serpent's head coiled with a leer at foot of it. There was the end. Then was I wrapped away by the implus, one immeasurable everlasting wave of a need to abolish the detested life. T'was done. You know the rest and how the folds o' oh, the thing, twisting for help, involved the other two more or less serpent-like, how I was mad, blind, stamped on all, the earthworms with the asp, and ended so. You came on me that night, your officers of justice, caught the crime in the first natural frenzy of remorse? Twenty miles off, sound sleeping as a child on a cloak I the straw which promised shelter first, with the bloody arms beside me, was it not so? Wherefore not? Why, how else should I be found? I was my own self, had my sense again, my soul safe from the serpents. I could sleep, indeed and, dear my lords, I shall sleep now, spite of my shoulder, in five minutes space, when you dismiss me, having truth enough. It is but a few days are past, I find since this adventure. Do you tell me, for? Then the dead are scarce quiet where they lie, old Pietro, old Violante, side by side at the church Lorenzo, oh, 
they know it well. So do I but my wife is still alive, has breath enough to tell her story yet, her way, which is not mine, no doubt at all. And Capenseki, you have summoned him, was he so far to send for? Not at hand? I thought some few o' oh, the stabs were in his heart, or had not been so lavish, less had served. Well, he too tells his story, florid prose as smooth as mine is rough. You see, my lords, there will be a lying intoxicating smoke born of the blood, confusion probably, for lies breed lies but all that rests with you. The trial is no concern of mine. With me the main of the care is over, I at least recognize who took that huge burthen off, let me begin to live again. I did God's bidding and man's duty, so, breathe free. Look you to the rest. I heard himself prescribe, that great physician, and dared lance the core of the bad ulcer. And the rage abates, I am myself in whole now, I prove cured by the eyes that see, the ears that hear again, the limbs that have relearned their youthful play, the healthy taste of food and feel of clothes and taking to our common life once more, all that now urges my defense from death. The willingness to live, what means it else? Before, but let a very action speak. Judge for yourselves, what life seemed worth to me who, not by proxy but in person, pitched head foremost into danger as a fool that never cares if he can swim or no so he but find the bottom, braves the brook. No man omits precaution, quite neglects secrecy, safety, schemes not how retreat, having schemed he might advance. Did I so scheme? Why? with the warrant which tis ask and have, with horse thereby made mine without a word, I have gained the frontier and slept safe that night. Then, my companions, call them what you please, slave or stipendiary, what need of one to me whose right hand did its honor's work? Hire an assassin yet expose yourself? As well by glove and then thrust naked hand out the thorn bush. No. The wise man stays at home, sends only agents out, with pay to earn, at home, when they come back, he straight discards or else disowns. Why use such tools at all when the man is foes are of his house, like mine, sit at his board, sleep in his bed? Why noise, when there is the Oketa and the silent way? Clearly my life was valueless. But now health is returned and sanity of soul no wise indifferent to the body's harm. I find the instinct bids me save my life. My wits, too, rally round me. I pick up and use the arms that strewed the ground before, unnoticed or spurned aside, I take my stand, make no defense. God shall not lose a life may do him further service, while I speak and you hear, you my judges and last hope. You are the law. Tis to the law I look. I began life by hanging to the law, to the law it is I hang till life shall end. My brother made appeal to the Pope, tis true, to stay proceedings, judge my cause himself nor trouble law, some fondness of conceit and rectitude, sagacity suffice the investigator in a case like mine, dispense with the machine of law. The Pope knew better. Set aside my brother's plea and put me back to law, referred the cause agitus mios, doubtlessly did well. Here, then, I clutch my judges, I claim law cry, by the higher law wherever law o' the land is humbly representative, cry, on what point is it, where either accuse, I fail to furnish you defense? I stand acquitted, actually or virtually by every intermediate kind of court that takes account of right or wrong in man, each unit in the series that begins with God's throne, ends with the tribunal here. God breathes, not speaks, his verdicts, felt not heard, passed on successively to each court I call man's conscience, custom, manners, all that make more and more effort to promulgate, mark God's verdict in determinable words, Till last come human jurists solidify fluid result, what as fixable lies forged, statute, the residue escapes and fume, yet hangs aloft, a cloud, 
as palpable to the finer sense as were the legist welds. Justinian Spandex only make precise what simply sparkled in many a size before, twitched in their brow or quivered on their lip, waited the speech they called but would not come, these courts then, whose decree your own confirms, take my whole life, not this last act alone, look on it by the light reflected thence. What has society to charge me with? Come, unreservedly, favor nor fear. I am Guido Franceschini, am I not? You know the courses I was free to take? I took just that which let me serve the church, I gave it all my labor and body and soul till these broke down I the service. Specify. Well, my last patron was a cardinal. I left him unconvicted of a fault was even helped, by way of gratitude, into the new life that I left him for, this very misery of the marriage. He made it, kind soul, so far as in him they signed the deed where he yet may see his name. He is gone to his reward, dead, being my friend who could have helped here also, that, of course. So far, there s my acquittal, I suppose. Then comes the marriage itself no question, lords, of the entire validity of that. In the extremity of distress, tis true, for after reasons, Furnished abundantly, I wish the thing invalid, went to you only some months since, set you duly forth my wrong and prayed your remedy, that a cheat should not have forced to cheat my whole life long. An a marriage? Tis impossible. Though ring about your neck be brass not gold, needs must it clasp, gan grant you all the same. Well, let me have the benefit, just so far, oh the fact announced. My wife then is my wife, I have allowance for a husband s right. I am charged with passing right s do bound, such acts as I thought just, my wife called cruelty, complained of in due form, convoked no court of common gossip I, but took her wrongs and not once, but so long as patience served to the town s top, jurisdiction s pride of place, to the archbishop and the governor. These heard her charge with my reply and found that futile, this sufficient, they dismissed the hysteric querulous rebel, and confirmed authority in its wholesome exercise, they, with directest access to the facts. a. For it was their friendship favored you, hereditary alliance against a breach of the social order, prejudice for the name of Franceschini. So I hear it said, but not here. You, lords. Never will you say such is the nullity of grace and truth, such the corruption of the faith, such lapse of law, such warrant have the malignous for daring reprehend us as they do, that we pronounce it just a common case, two dignitaries, each in his degree first, foremost, this the spiritual head, and that the secular arm o oh, the body politic, should, for mere wrongs love and injustice sake, side with, Aid and abet in cruelty this broken begarly noble, bribed perhaps by his watered wine and moldy crust of bread rather than that sweet tremulous flower like wife who kissed their hands and curled about their feet looking the irresistible loveliness and tears that takes man captive, turns. Enough. Do you blast your predecessors? What forbids posterity to trebly blast yourselves who set the example and instruct their tongue? You dreaded the crowd, succumbed to the popular cry, or else, would no wise seem d for thereto and yield to public clamor though I the right. You riddled your eye of my NCM lineness, the noble whose misfortune wearied you, or, what is more probable, made common cause with the cleric section, punished in myself maladroit uncomplacent laity defective in behavior to a priest who claimed the customary partnership by the house and the wife. Lords, any lie will serve. Look to it, or allow me freed so far. Then I proceed a step, come with clean hands thus far, retell the tale told eight months since. The wife, you allow so far, I have not wronged, has fled my roof, plundered me and decamped in company with the priest her paramour and I gave chase, came up with, caught the two at the wayside inn where both had spent the night, found them in flagrant fault, and found as well, 
by documents with name and plan and date, the fault was furtive then that as flagrant now, their intercourse a long established crime. I did not take the license law as self gives to slay both criminals o' the spot at the time, but held my hand, preferred play prodigy of patience, which the world calls cowardice, rather than seem anticipate the law and cast discredit on its organs. You so, to your bar I brought both criminals, and made my statement, heard their counter charge nay, their corroboration of my tale, no wise disputing its allegments, not at the main. Not more than nature's decency compels men to keep silence in this kind, only contending that the deeds of out would take another color and bear excuse. You were to judge between us. So you did. You disregard the excuse, you breathe away the color of innocence and leave guilt black. Guilty is the decision of the court, and that I stand in consequence untouched, one white intergity from her to heel. Not guilty? Why then did you punish them? True, punishment has been inadequate, tis not I only, not my friends that joke, my foes that jeer, who echo inadequate for, by a chance that comes to help for once. The same case simultaneously was judged at Arezzo, in the province of the court, where the crime had beginning but not end. They then, deciding on but half o the crime, the effraction, robbery, Features of the fault I never cared to dwell upon at Rome, what was it they judged as penalty to Pompilia, the one criminal owed the pair amenable to their judgment, not the priest who is Rome's? Why, just imprisonment for life I the stench. There was Tuscany's a war to a wife that robs her husband, you at Rome having to deal with adultery in a wife and, in a priest, breach of the priestly vow. Give gentle sequestration for a month in a manageable convent, then release, you call imprisonment, in the very house of the very couple, the sole aim and end of the culprit's crime was there to reach and rest and there take solace and defy me, well, this difference twixt their penalty and yours is immaterial, make your penalty less merely that she should henceforth wear black gloves and white fan, she who wore the opposite why? All the same the fact o' oh, the thing subsists. Reconcile to your conscience as you may, be it on your own heads, you pronounced one half o' oh, the penalty for heinousness like hers and his, that is for a fault at carnival of comfort pelting past discretion s law, or accident to handkerchief inland, which falls perversely as a lady kneels abruptly, and but half conceals her neck. I acquiesce for my part, punished though by a pinpoint scratch, means guilty, guilty means what have I been but innocent hitherto? Anyhow, here the offense, being punished, ends. Ends. For ye deem so, did you not, sweet lords? That was throughout the veritable aim o' the sentence light or heavy, to redress recognized wrong? You're right at me, I think? Well then, what if I, at this last of all, Demonstrate you, as my whole pleading proves, no particle of wrong received thereby one atom of right? That cure grew worse disease? That in the process you call justice done all along you have nipped away just inch by inch the creeping climbing length of plague breaking my tree of life from root to branch, and left me, after all in every act of your interference, lightened of what load? At liberty wherein? Mere words and wind. Now I was saved, now I should feel no more the hot breath, find a respite from fixed eye and vibrant tongue. Why, scarce your back was turned, there was the reptile, that feigned death at first, renewing its detested spire and spire around me, rising to such heights of hate that, so far from mere purpose now to crush and coil itself on the remains of me, body and mind, and their flesh fang content. Its aim is now to evoke life from death, make me anew, satisfy in my son the hunger I may feed but never sate, tormented on the perpetuity, my son, whom, dead, I shall know, understand, feel, hear, see, never more escape the sight in heaven that s turned to hell, or hell returned, so, rather, say, to the same earth again, molded into the image and made one fashioned of soul as featured like in face, 
first taught to laugh and lisp and stand and go by that thief, poisoner, and adulteress I call Pompilia, he calls. Sacred name, be unpronounced, be unpolluted here. And last led up to the glory and prize of hate by his foster father, Capensecchia's self, the perjured priest, pink of conspirators, tricksters and knaves, yet polished, superfine, manhood to model adolescence by. Lords, look on me, declare, when, what I show, is nothing more nor less than what you deemed and doled me out for justice, what did you say? For reparation, restitution and more, will you not thank, praise, bid me to your breasts for having done the thing you thought to do, and thoroughly trampled out Sinai's life at last? I have heightened phrase to make your soft speech serve, doubled the blow you but essayed to strike, carried into effect your mandate here that else had fallen to ground, mere duty done, oversight of the master just supplied by zeal at a servant, I, being used to serve, have simply. What is it they charge me with? Blackened again, made legible once more your own decree, not permanently it, rightly conceived but all too faintly traced, it reads efficient, now, combinatory, a terror to the wicked, answers so the mood of the magistrate, the mind of law. Absolve, then, me, law as mere executant. Protect your own defender, save me, sirs. Give me my life, give me my liberty, my good name and my civic rights again. It would be too fond, too complacent play into the hands of the devil, should we lose the game here, I forgot, a soldier be that yields his life, as interate with the stroke o oh, the sting that saves the hive. I need that life, oh, never fear. I l l find life plenty use though it should last five years more, aches and all. For, first thing, there s the mother s age to help let her come break her heart upon my breast, not on the blank stone of my nameless tomb. The fugitive brother has to be bidden back to the old routine, repugnant to the tread, of daily suit and service to the church, throw jibe and jest, those stones that she my flung. A and the spirit broken youth at home, the awestruck altar ministrant, shall make amends for faith now pale side at the source, shall see truth yet triumphant, just as yet a victor in the battle of this world. Give me for last, best gift, my son again, whom law makes mine, I take him at your word, mine be he, by miraculous mercy, lords. Let me lift up his youth and innocence to purify my palace room by room purged of the memories, lent from his bright brow light to the old proud paladin my sire shrunk now for shame into the darkest shade o' the tapestry, showed him once and shrouds him now. Then may we, strong from that rekindled smile, go forward, face new times, the better day. And when, in times may it better through your brave decision now, might but utopia be. Rum rife with honest women and strong men, manners reformed, old habits back once more, customs that recognize the standard worth, the wholesome household rule in force again, husbands once more God as representative, wives like the typical spouse once more, and priests no longer men of Belial, with no aim at leading silly women captive, but of rising to such duties as yours now. Then will I set my son at my right hand and tell his father's story to this point, adding the task seemed superhuman, still I dared and did it, trusting God and law, and they approved of me, give praise to both. And if, for answer, he shall stoop to kiss my hand, and peradventure start thereat, I engage to smile that was an accident at the necessary process, just a trip o' the torture irons in their search for truth hardly misfortune, and no fault at all.